Hello and welcome to Boise State University in the community. I'm your host Peter Rawless and our guest tonight is Professor Cheryl Jorsik. Hi, welcome. Hi Peter. Uh, now you've been a professor here since uh, 1997. What mm -hmm. brought you here and what made you decide to stay? Well, when I was looking for a job as a professor, I was looking for a particular type of university, one that focused on undergraduate research and allowed me to do my cancer research at the same time. So. Here I could come and I could um, work with undergraduate students and I had the opportunity to do a lot of teaching and grow my research program at a school that really focused on undergraduates. And now the school has been growing over the years and expanding and we just started a PhD program in biomolecular sciences like four years ago. Wow. So we no longer have just undergraduate students, we have graduate students, both masters and PhD. That's great. And, yeah. and uh, what prompted you to get into the study of cancer? Well, that's kind of an interesting and long story, but I actually uh, was uh, a biology major in college because I loved biology and I even had a microscope that I had asked Santa to bring me when I was oh. about <laughs> 11 years old. And uh, so I guess I just liked biology and I was um, going to school at Penn State University in Pennsylvania and lifeguarding during the summer and at one point my parents said, well Cheryl, don't you think you ought to get some real life experience? Perhaps you should do some research, biology research. And so they talked to some neighbors and found somebody who knew somebody at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, and we lived in Maryland. So I got a job working at the National Cancer Institute wow. uh, after my sophomore year of college. And so I just stayed in research the whole time after that. Wow, that's really amazing. Uh, now what courses or courses do you teach uh, here on campus? On campus, I teach um, cell biology, which is a big class for that all biology majors and some other students have to take. And then I, my favorite class is molecular biology of cancer, as you can imagine. And that's a class that's usually taken by upper division uh, undergrads, like seniors, and then master students and some PhD students. Wow, and what's the curriculum for that class? Well, you really um, delve into the whole uh, genetics behind cancer. So we start the class by talking about um, just what cancer is and how it develops kind of on the overall level. And then we talk about cancer at the clinical level. There's a lot of pre-med students in that class. And we talk about how you would diagnose and treat. Um, usually we use prostate cancer as an example. And then we just talk about all the genetic mutations that can lead to cancer and, and the signaling pathways that get mutated that cause cancer. And so they come out of that class really understanding a lot and knowing a lot. If one of the members of their family were to get cancer, they would really be able to contribute in a lot of ways to that. And I'm sure like over the years, the technology and the research has changed you know, for cancer. So does, does the things that you teach your students change from semester to semester or year to year or from this, or how does that work? Well, um, the basic overview of the class stays the same, but every year I have to update it. So it is a class that's changing pretty quickly. It's only taught once a year, but I have to change some of the material every year and keep it up to date. Oh well, yeah, I would have to think so. Yeah. Um, and I understand that some of the students have an opportunity to speak with cancer survivors. Is that true? Yeah, so um, uh, Cara Brasha here at Boise State is the Director of Service Learning, and I've known her for some years, and she's like, Cheryl, why don't you add a service learning component to your upper division uh, biology class. And that was, at the time, a very difficult thing to do. Not many people had service learning components. And so we were trying to be creative. How could we have students use the material that they learn in molecular biology of cancer to help people in the community in a service type fashion? So what we came up with was there were certain patients, breast cancer patients, or even family members of cancer patients who don't necessarily get all the questions that they have answered from their doctors, probably most likely due to time. And so what if they were to be paired up with a student who had a pretty high level of the molecular biology of cancer oh, wow. and could answer their questions? And so that's how we set it up. So um, the students don't give any advice and they're not trying to replace the physician in any way but they can explain the basic biology behind cancer. They can explain how particular cancer therapeutics work and why they might give side effects. They can 
research questions on to the genetic potential of passing that cancer on to you know a, a child and the family. So they do. They we've had some really big successes with that. Well, so it's beneficial to both students and the people who come right. and talk to them. Right. And the students love it because this might be, some of them want to go to medical school or graduate school or pharmaceut uh, pharmaceutical studies. And they may never, if they're going to graduate school, they may never interact with a patient or at least not for many years. And this might be their one chance to actually understand what a patient goes through. And so when they start doing research after they finish graduate school, they can say, oh, I really know what it feels like to be a patient. I've worked with one. And it can help a graduate student actually um, perform better at their research because they know they're working towards a goal of trying to help somebody get better. Yeah, absolutely. So it must feel a lot more like job training for them than it does like an actual academic training. So well, on top of that too, but they actually get some hands-on work. Yeah. I, I haven't heard any of the students mention it like a job, but I know that it's a very positive experience. Well, that's good. Yeah. And outside the classroom, what kind of research and other activities are you a part of? Well, I mean, outside the classroom, I mostly spend the time running the lab. So I have a cancer research lab. We have um, undergraduate students in it. We actually have one high school student in it. We, I have two PhD students. Um, two lab technicians oh, wow. that are full-time employees, and then we don't have any post-doctorates right now, but after you finish graduate school and get a PhD, you usually have to do a transitional period in a lab before you have your own lab, and that's called a postdoctoral -doc, post fellowship. So um, it's, it's an, an active lab, and I manage that and work with the students and technicians to keep their projects on track and work towards our goals of answering our research questions. That's well, quite, quite the busy schedule you have. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> we faculty at Boise State keep pretty busy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's the uh, most rewarding and most difficult part of your job? Wow. Um, most rewarding is probably the excitement when a student in their lab gets some really exciting results that they know may change um, the future of breast cancer. So we study breast cancer metastasis and the role that inflammatory proteins that your body naturally makes may contribute to that process, especially if you have too many inflammatory proteins. So there's nothing like a student do, doing a hard experiment, getting a great result, and well, yeah. that's really a good feeling, knowing that, uh, that they'll have that accomplishment behind them for the rest of their life. What about the most difficult? The most difficult? Um, Grant writing is not my favorite thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in order to fund this research lab, we have to be writing grants and getting them. Um, so writing them is actually not quite as hard as getting them, but that's a, a challenge that's ongoing to everybody in cancer research. Also, oh, so, uh, so the, the funding for the program is not through, just through the school, but outside of it as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so we have, I have to write grants that um, bring in money to uh, pay for the graduate student stipends and their tuitions and um, to pay for the technicians and even to pay for me to work during the summer and then for all the supplies. And now you're also part of a bunch of um, nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, tell, me, tell me about those. And well, um, I have been, uh, our lab has received funding in the past from the American Cancer Society and for, from the Susan G. Komen Foundation. And so those are two cancer-related foundations that have a, um, a presence in, in Boise, Idaho. And so I, I do stuff with them sometimes because I'm really grateful to their organizations. And I also work with the, um, the American Cancer Society has two parts. One part is the part that uh, raises money and pays for research grants. There's another side that is called uh, American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. And that one is a policy side. So that one actually works with the legislature trying to get um, uh, bills passed that will help cancer patients and help um, make things better for people and family family members of patients who have cancer. So I do a little bit of lobbying sometimes for that. Oh, really? Um, the thing I'm most involved with now is actually a breast cancer foundation that's based in Idaho. It's not national, or uh, it's, it's locally based, and that's called Expedition Inspiration. And it uh, is also geared towards raising money for um, breast cancer research and also for holding, uniquely, it holds this symposium every year up in Sun Valley where they bring some of the 
premier can breast cancer researchers together for a couple days to work together and try to come up with new solutions. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I know, are you also a part of the, the Pink Out events here on campus? I, I am, yes. Um, in the last two years, I've participated in different events related to that. And um, for those people who don't know what the Pink Out is, this year it's going to be uh, October 20th. For the BYU game, the student section will have a pink out and wear pink t-shirts and pink clothes um, to support not just breast cancer, but all cancer. And uh, some of the money from the sale of those t-shirts, plus other events, is going into a fund in the Office of Research and Economic Development. The Vice President, Mark Rudin, is, has established a fund that we're going to use to allow undergraduate students to actually write grants and apply themselves from um, these little tiny grants to do cancer research. Wow. So we're getting ready to start that program. Um, but it has funding in it from the last two years of t-shirt sales, and we'll keep building on that. And over the years, have you noticed that more and more students are participating in these kind of events and donating more and buying more uh, things that profit these organizations? Um, I think that, I don't know the answer to that actually, if more and more students are involved. Um, I know that the American Cancer Society is, has just held its Relay for Life, which is a big fundraising event that they have nationally across the country in different cities. Um, Boise State started one a couple years ago. And the one this year was extremely successful, had more students involved, and had uh, raised more money than before. So that oh. was a very good event, yeah. Are there any other um, upcoming events that are uh, happening? Um, well, with the Breast Cancer Foundation Expedition Inspiration, that's the Idaho-based Breast Cancer Foundation, um, if you listen to the name Expedition Inspiration, it's about, uh, has had its starts in, um, mountain climbing, and the woman who started it, Laura Evans, had breast cancer. She was um, living in Sun Valley, and she thought, well, I could get my friends together, and we could climb mountains and inspire ourselves, and then we could use that money to, to, for this foundation to try to get more research. Um, so there will be a uh, mountain climb in the Sun Valley area on August 20th. I think that's a Saturday. And so people can look at the expeditioninspiration.org website, and they can go and read about that climb. And there'll be guides leading that. It's, it won't be a super technical climb, but it, it'll still have guides. And then in the Boise area, there will be um, a hike, open, the two levels, an easier one and a harder one, open um, to everyone. And that will be September 17th, I think, another Saturday. A Saturday that there's not a football game. Yeah, yeah. yeah a home <laughs> football game, anyway. Um, and if students want to get, uh, know, uh, get some more information on get involved, where should they go to do that? Um, just check out the website, expeditioninspiration.org. Yeah. Uh, and for students who are interested in the study of molecular biology, what would you have to say to them? Um, they are really picking the right thing <laughs> to study. Uh, it, most everybody is affected in their lives by somebody who has cancer. Um, in the United States, one out of every two people will get cancer during their lifetime. And um, President Obama has just recently announced that he wants to work towards eradicating cancer. So I would say this is a great time to be learning about cancer and going into molecular biology and cellular biology so that you can try to do research and, and figure out how to stop these diseases. I mean, that's so great. And me personally, I've had my own family members afflicted with cancer and breast cancer too. So it's been really nice to see that this, this university is you know, taking charge in that front. So I really want to thank you for you know, coming here tonight and talking to me about it. Oh, you're very welcome, Peter. <laughs> uh, well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Uh, my, my, I'm Peter Rollis. You've been watching Boise State University in the community. Thank you. Thank you.